Um, I think Robert, the, the guy who's not here, that we've mentioned He's a few times. He's there in the background. He likes animals so we can represent <laughs> him with a fish. He doesn't tour with us anymore because he likes to make even more music and stay at home in the studio. Um, he generally makes the beats and some of the sounds and then in some song he will make a beat with some sounds and then me and Sasha will meet with this beat and we start working on it in the studio just the two of us as a song and build it too and add some more sound and try to arrange it to see where it's going. And um, a thing we like to do also as well, especially in the last album, is pack all the important stuff in the studio in, in the car and go to a, like a vacation home. In Brandenburg or in Brandenburg, Brandenburg around Berlin, and then you rent the house for a week and you just put the studio there, and the three of us just working the whole time, and then we can immediately react to each other and uh, and, and well, all this kind of stuff. We used to have stuff like uh, we'd make a track, we'd get bored with it, forget about it for a year and a half, open it up and say, oh, actually, some of it's good, but a lot of it's really crap, and then just make a completely different version or basically remix our own music, you know, using one or two elements of the original version, just taking, remixing it if you want, or bootlegging it, you know what I mean? We I didn't want to rap anymore, actually. Yeah, yeah. She was the loud, she was the loud. The first album, I didn't rap that much. And the second album, Blitz Nuts, I rapped the whole time. And I was like, okay, cool, done that. Move on. And how come? Don't know. I think even in the first album, you see an element of both. In the first album, I'm singing and rapping, and there's kind of slower tracks and faster tracks. And then we went for a lot of sort of more straight, poppy, kind of rappy tracks in the second one. I think in a way, you almost often you react to your last album or with us in a way you know with our first one was really lo-fi so we were like okay now we want to make stuff which sounds more solid and the second one was really poppy and we we're like okay let's forget that again we're definitely itchy itchy feet kind of not concentrated hyperactive different personalities always changing our mind about stuff which is kind of healthy i guess next Sasha's month gonna do a rap I'm going to do a rap. Yeah, I'm going to do a rap. Me and Kanye, right? We've just been hanging out on this bowl. And um, now we're bringing out, we're bringing out this, all this music we made in Africa last year. I don't know if Oren told you, we sat in this house in Africa with Kabul Tashman and Mo Selector and tons of MCs and singers and musicians and freaks and made lots of music. And it's coming out next month, right? Mm, or in May? No, in May. In May. The album's coming out in May, so that will come out. Not yet, I don't know, uh, not yet. I've been making all this funny music on my guitar, just me and the guitar, and we're like, do we pack that into the jacuzzi? And at the moment we're like, mm, don't think so. We're so. going to make solo products, but we're still going to make them together. <laughs> That's the point. Just going to call it something else. <laughs> we need to find a future different channels to bring out all this kind of music we want to make, because in the way it ends, we, we like making like weird, weird lo-fi, jazzy, crazy stuff, and then we also want to make 140 BPM tracks. And most people just cannot deal with that on the same album, do you know what I mean? So, I think um, we're more productive than ever, I would say, though. Whether all of it's good uh, is another question. Uh, so productive, yeah. Also more, more productive than ever. <coughs> Maybe by, by a bit, then. Well, I think we're all more productive than ever. I mean, come on, Robert produces more music Robert than any living yeah. producer in Berlin, one has to say that. Of our musical life, how much of it is jacuzzi? For me, it's definitely 90% or 80%. Yeah, the same. Uh, we have not... Uh, Robert has a bit more side projects than this, but I mean, for me and Sasha, we are like... I jam with some people about once every week or 10 days, but this is something very new. This is also only since a few months. Oh, okay, well, all the obvious things with live, you actually get feedback from people. Um, the challenge of trying to, you know, get people to get into it, the attention, the attention, did I say the attention? <laughs> um, <laughs> studio, <laughs> um, studio, yeah, you actually, you make something new at the end of it, which is really nice, you can start there in the morning, you have nothing, and by the end of the day, you've got some stuff, you know, You can go into details, fun. if you want the studio, you can really go into detail, but again, it's more what fine, life is more like, pow! Yeah. Can't, you know, it's like yin and yang, you can't do without the other for me, you know. 
I don't know. Um, last weekend we played in a club in Moscow called Solyanka and it was a really nice club. Uh, why do I think it's a nice club? Because people were allowed to fall asleep on the sofa and they wouldn't be chucked out. And that's a good thing because I think it's rude that if a club sells you alcohol, you get so drunk that you fall asleep on the sofa. And then a big fat bored bouncer comes and drags you and chucks you out in the cold. I think that's rude. No, I think it's a combination. It's a combination between the sound, the specific sound of the production and what it's all about on the album. And Sasha's performance is like two, these two elements, which also the show works not, also sonically with the deep bass frequencies and that, and uh, Sasha unforgettable presence uh, on the stage. We want them to feel at home, you know, we want them to express themselves, but we hope that they express themselves in some form because we give them a lot of expression and we would like them to express themselves back, but you know, you don't always get what you want, right? I always say that there are more people will probably, you know, most people will come to a live show and say, wow, that's entertaining, um, than people could actually listen to the albums, do you know what I mean? I think in a way the live show is more accessible than, uh, than uh, music we release, you know? Home tips, some weirdos in Kenya we met. The Gospel Warriors, you know the Gospel Warriors no, from Kibera and Nairobi? <laughs> These people, we made music with them there. They're oh, two the kids who are 12 years old. Nobody knows them. No, something they can get actually. Oh, something net. you can get. Something that we should know. You've got some funny stuff, go for it. No, it's actual for now, like, I don't know. Gonzo Sufi, Gonzo Sufi, no. Yeah. Gonzo Sufi. Yeah, but what do you wait? You want, they don't want something which they know. They want us to give them a tip someone can find out. Everyone who yeah. listens to our stuff knows what Gonzo Sufi is. Just tell them about your funny Egyptian music or something yes. and these people can go and check. That's what I want. You know Um Kultum? You see, there's no one to Um Kultum is the diva of the Arab world. It's the, the legendary singer of the older Arab world. The Egyptian singer in the 70s, 60s, I think. I listen to it at home sometimes, it's nice. If you want to have your first step into the music of the Middle East, is uh, start with Um Kultu. And my tip would be, probably from Africa, this band called Head Zole from Ghana, from the 70s. I wouldn't know about this other than this journalist who interviewed us about something, some freak on African music, and he bought me a DVD with like tons of music on it, which I'd never heard of in my whole life. And okay, it's being a bit dramatic to say it changed my life, but it's just dope music on there, stuff I've never heard of. So you can put Heads or Lee from Ghana. I'm sure you, I reckon you can get it somewhere.